Hey, 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 Superior Shave fans, another human side doing today. What is this one? Uh, 14 December 2022. Uh, you've seen me do the washing and the pre-shave a bunch of times, so I'll just quickly show you the product that I used. was the French shaving soap and the French pre-shave oil. I will be using my only French shaving brush, this thing that I found in a kit which has a knot of hair that came from badgers from Europe, not China. Chinese shared species, but they were living in Europe and thus they are a little different. I will use the um, aftershave balm from Osma, the new shaving soap from Osma. It smells great. And I will use a alum stone in between when I use that balm in the shave. And I am going to use this razor that I had mailed to my friend, uh, Bill M. in uh, Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, he lives in Pennsylvania. This is the Sheffield Silver Steel that he honed very well with the uh, convex honing that he does, finishing on paste, the CBN emulsion paste. And I successfully shaved with it eight times before touching it up today. Today, I briefly went on my, uh, I did not use my bevel thinning stone, the primary one. I used this 10 inch coticule, which you can see is shaped. It's actually a cylinder shape of about, uh, yeah, somewhere in the five meters range. Maybe a dozen, 15 laps on that or something. And then significant time, you know, a hundred plus laps on this three by 10 black Arkansas stone shaped uh, this way, about two meters this way, eight meters and change. And it's really good at getting the last little bit of the bevel nice and thin. Already, and I, I did the thing that I don't do in the videos for the customers where I angled off axis with the knife because it does make funny marks you're basically changing the diameter of your stone on the fly because when the stone has a primary diameter this way and a secondary diameter that way if you go like this on the stone you are interacting squarely with the long axis diameter if you go like this on the stone you would be interacting squarely with the short axis diameter and then if you go like this you are, are misaligning the contact points on the spine and the edge, so to speak. But you are you are able to, if if the long diameter is this way and the short diameter is that way, and you start going like this, you are shortening a la carte the diameter. And I'm trying to find a point where I can use a little bit of pressure and get just behind the edge because of the old book saying in the later chapters that when you do that, the whole remainder will flex and meet the curve of the wheel, in this case, the wheel-shaped hone, if it is 0.1 millimeter or thinner, which is apparently to the grinders uh, a very small amount of the razor. So let me just uh, quickly put some lather on and then we'll strop and then we'll mess with the lather one more time and then we'll shave. And I wanted to tell you a customer service story from my new career. Uh, which I found rather interesting and something I believe in customer centric jobs is you never do anything for the short term profit at the expense of the brand of you as a customer service agent for the long term. The most important thing is that the trust that the customer can trust that you are advising them in a way that you would advise yourself if the tables were turned. And I have always, whether it was my time at B&H or the time running my own business, I have always conducted myself, or as a waiter too, uh, with that philosophy. Now, I have to provide some privacy for my new employer, so I will try to anonymize this story as best I can. But I'm working for a large corporation with many um, locations in pretty much 
almost any city in the United States, they would be there. Um, not every city, but, but a lot of them. And I trained at one location for two weeks, which was very busy and in an affluent area. And uh, now I will be stationed at a less affluent, less busy location. And um, I want to tell you what I saw. Well, during the two weeks of training, um, the location I worked at had an unquestionably toxic masculine work environment. Uh, that's something that's common in this field, I suppose. But when I told my wife the daily coming home stories, she was rather shocked, one would say. However, um, although that's not very excusable, it is not excusable. What I did notice about the heads of operation there is they definitely honored the idea of only sell the customers what they need and put the ball in their court if they want to buy more things, etc., etc. Because the long-term trust that you create is by far the most important thing. And at my training facility where I worked, I saw extreme customer loyalty from the people operating the location because that you can trust me thing is very permeable from the people running it. Now fast forward to my third week with the company and I'm at my new location. So the first day I was just doing like a, more training where you got to sit there and have headphones on and you're not really interacting with the customer. Which I would have thought comes before the other two weeks where I was heavily interacting with the customers. But no, it didn't. That's how it worked this time. But then um, on the on the second day at the new location, although I was still doing watch PowerPoint, etc. type of stuff, I could occasionally hear and witness the customer interactions. And um, what I witnessed was a person coming in uh, who obviously doesn't have that much money. And uh, let's see, I have to, I'm going to go strop over here. So I'm going to put this block of wood behind my strop and the wood is shaped like a two meter diameter. I'm just going to strop straight on that and shave and see how it goes. That is in concept, uh, curving the edge more, making it more concave. I bought this Tears of Sard from the Ohio uh, hardware store that was having a sale in 2016 or 2017. That's not from the current manufacturer. I have not been able to make it do the singing sound you may have seen me make from other videos. I've only honed it once though. Well, twice. I honed it originally, used it a few times, mailed it off to Mr. Bill M. And then I touched it up finally after it shaved me very well for eight times. Okay, where was I? All right, so someone came in and they needed help. And um, the thing that they needed help with was something that someone in the field would know quickly that... You have to uh, you have to buy one product, and then after buying that product, it can be determined if you need to buy more products, which are more expensive. Uh, at the at the location in which I'm working, the business cannot necessarily sell you all the 
things that are on the menu, if that makes sense. But they can sell you the first thing on the menu related to the problem that the customer had that didn't have a lot of money. And so when this customer came in, it would be obvious to me, only being there two weeks, that the chances that The items on the menu that she would need to buy to no longer have a reason to visit the business were not things that that particular location could sell. However, there is a small chance that upon buying the first item, they could sell her more things. But be clear just to be clear that was highly unlikely as the outcome so what i saw was the people in charge of the particular location at which i work convincing the customer to buy the first thing on the menu that which provides you the ability to know if you'll be buying other things on the menu and selling the merits of that, knowing full well there was very little chance that she would be finishing her consumption at your location of business. In other words, you should have the goal to help the person who's buying the commodity in the long term. And if you can't help them, you have to be honest and say you can't help them. But that's not what happened here. What happened here was um, that there was more concern expressed by the people running it, much more in my opinion, for banking the small, the small purchase, which would in the end do very little to help this person because They'd still have to go somewhere else. And I just don't think that's good business whatsoever. I hate it and I want to go tattle, but. As I said, it's a large corporation. They don't know me from Adam. They probably know the people that did this sales technique a lot better than me. I don't think the people at the top of the pyramid would ever be cool with knowing that that was what happened. But uh, if they don't uh, read the tea leaves and try to figure out, you know, the sales numbers, whatever, then it, they probably wouldn't know if the customer didn't bring their attention to the, that which occurred. Now, as it turns out in this case, um, the outcome was that the business from which I'm working, at the location I'm working, I mean, was able to sell all of the products that customer would want to buy upon purchasing the one profitable and irrelevant if you can't sell more product. So they got lucky, but I even hold, overheard the powers that be talking and amongst themselves, they were just saying how they just wanted to make that short sale. So, um, yeah, that's not something I've ever done at the Superior Shave, nor will I ever do. I don't like thirsty salespeople, and I don't care what their sales figures are. Your trust is the most important thing and so you know that was on the first shift that i saw that i don't know what i'm going to see as time goes by and i'm at this location where i guess because they're not so busy and their clientele is not so affluent they feel that they have to do things like that to survive Whatever, whatever the rationale, I don't appreciate it at all. 
So I'm just going to have to uh, bite my tongue for a little while and hope I don't see any other throw away the value of the of the long term good for some of more of the short term good thinking. Uh, I hope I don't see that again, but I figure I'll uh, do the job at this location a week or two more and then I'll start going up the food chain and saying as politely as I can that I want to be at that other location and if pressed I will bring up the naming of names of that story that I just told you that took too goddamn long. 16 minutes? Okay. We're almost done here. Anyway, what was the moral of the story? Yeah, always, always do the best long-term thing for the customer every single time. Other than that, uh, I did notice this job is something that more young people would be doing. And when I was in the affluent area, like I say, I love talking to customers. And uh, more than once, I got the feeling that they looked at me like, why are you a bright guy doing this? But when you are middle-aged and heterosexual, Caucasian, male, self-employed for 10 years, no one's going to give you a chance. And it took four years of begging hundreds and hundreds of times just to get this chance. So that's what they don't understand. Now, maybe after being in a, a front of the customer where they can see you, not just talk to you on an email or the phone call situation for a year or more. I might get enough attention that this can springboard me to an opportunity more appropriate with my station and skills. And I don't like saying that because it sounds like you're saying you're better than the people that are at the job. It's a perfectly fine job and you can make a living doing it. So, but yeah, I did notice that people were looking at me. Uh, the intelligence or education equivalent of you being the guy that's too old for the nightclub, something like that. Okay, let's get cleaned up. As to the eraser and my little convex honing thing, eh, it wasn't that great. And I think on the next time I will go ahead and use the step number one and um, maybe I will try go ahead and using the um, the CBN emulsion on some leather or balsa. Um, it did feel very sharp, but it didn't feel really smooth. And normally with the Arkansas, I can get both. Also, I've used that soap a bunch of times. This time, I, my lather was to the foamy side, which is never good. Um, I tried. It's hard to sit there and talk on a video and think about that crap at the same time. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, this actually feels really good, but it, uh, it didn't tug or pull back around my mouth. It just didn't feel smooth the way that I like, and I would describe to you smooth as a uniformity of the feeling of whatever the feeling it's making whether the razor is going past just plain skin or a hairy zone it just feels all the same that's to me what what smooth is and then sharp is how easily it bludgeons the hair out of the way so it it felt like it had a, a good horsepower for pushing the hair out of the way but i knew where it was doing that and where it was going over plain spots and uh, the pinnacle is that it has both of those things the cuticle feels very much smooth, where it feels all the same, but you do feel more resistance 
for any spot than you than you do with other things. The arc, on the other hand, uh, it does have that extra gear, in my opinion, where it can just get sharper. But, well, I mean, maybe it was the latter. Maybe my lazy pre-shave here. Who knows? Okay, let's get some of this bomb on here. <laughs> and you hear the uh, little thing in the background, the noisemaker? Hey, uh, if you see that noisemaker in my videos or in the links here, you don't have to buy the noisemaker, okay? Just click on the thing and take, and that'll take you to the, um, to the Amazon page. And if you just complete an order with that click starting as your session, I'll get one and a half to two percent of your sales value as a commission. And trust me, I need the money, okay? I wouldn't be doing the menial job that I have to do now. That makes me feel pathetic at times uh, if I didn't uh, need that money. So thank you. That's my endorsement for that. Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.